In a few months, the world has rapidly changed. And we have an opportunity to use this moment to reimagine the world we live in forever. Powering transformation through bold thinking, big ideas, and brave action. This is Project Reset. Uh, yeah, hey, we're uh, Joel and Benji Madden, the Madden brothers. Uh, we got our start in entertainment over 20 some years ago uh, in our band, Good Charlotte. Uh, we went on to found a music company called MDDN.co. Uh, we're co-founders with another uh, two people it, it, with a music platform called veeps.com. That's a live streaming ticketing platform. Uh, and we are artists for artists. You know that the idea of direct to consumer, which is where I think all, all things are going, um, it applies to music as well, and Veeps was built as a direct-to-fan engagement platform mm. for artists to own and operate their own, essentially it's VIP, so we see live streaming as a function of VIP. Um, mm. So originally live streaming was just another tool on the platform to, to own and operate your own fan business without a third party. Um, it's a commission-free platform, artists run businesses and they're not taxed by the platform. I'm John Gingek and I uh, started and run a company called Hub Entertainment Research. And we do uh, consumer research, um, about 10,000 surveys a year on everything to find out uh, how technology is changing the way that people discover and choose and consume uh, entertainment content of all kinds, TV, movies, music, video games. Uh, I was doing this for another, uh, a bigger company and had done, uh, just because I've always thought the entertainment space and uh, I'm a musician, highly amateur, but I'm in a band myself and, and saw how uh, a lot of technology was really poised to kind of change the way people consume all of this stuff. Uh, as soon as there's a, a broadband pipe into everyone's house and, a, and a, you know, a powerful computer in everybody's pocket, the impact of that was going to be massive. And so in 2013, I thought there might be enough of a change to, to kind of start my own company focused entirely on entertainment and nothing else. You know, even though that's not that long ago, we're, we're one of the companies that's kind of been focused on how these changes are occurring and track them for the longest. Absolutely has probably quadrupled what I consume as a, as a consumer. Um, I think being home, having more time in between, engaging with my kids and the things they're doing. I mean, my son plays video games. My daughter is big into you know, YouTube, TikTok, all that stuff. So engaging with them, I've become a consumer of things I wasn't a consumer of, mm -hmm. um, but then also just my own personal time, listening to music, watching TV shows, movies, all that stuff. Um, I definitely have more habits that I didn't have before that mm -hmm. I have now as far as like what I'm watching and, and what I'm doing consuming wise. So definitely like I'd say like four times what I was. I've been playing more video games and especially uh, buying them digitally. So downloading them rather than going to Best Buy and buying the game itself. I already used up one whole hard drive. I got to go get another one now, um, but that's like a habit. I don't think I'm going to go back to buying, you know, retail again. If the, the pandemic has accelerated some things that were happening anyhow, for instance, in our research, we find that people are spending a lot more time watching TV or movies than they did before, but that uh, streaming platforms like uh, Netflix or Hulu or HBO Max or Disney Plus account for a lot more of that increase than regular TV does. That's, that's a lot more likely to be kind of consistent. And I think another thing that's really interesting is that, you know, we talked about the, the ability to artists to create kind of content themselves and deliver it themselves. So we did one study where we looked at uh, people who watched uh, talk shows and then we tracked down people who had watched a talk show that was produced at home like The Daily Show and about a third of people said that they preferred it when the show was filmed in front of a studio audience but there's another 30 percent who said that didn't really make any difference and everybody else said they actually preferred it uh, being watched at home and and to your guys point there was a lot of those shows especially at the beginning that were the production was was a lot worse than like your average YouTube influencer would have and, and even with that uh, people still felt kind of this, this direct connection with the host that they didn't feel when there was a big elaborate set, uh, a big audience. And, uh, you know, again, some, some good news with John Krasinski was one of the most successful pieces of content that came out during this whole thing. And it was noteworthy at, at how low budget it was, how low budget the production was. <laughs> 